Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Faculty of Engineering and Design's live webinar. My name is Kira, and I'm a recent grad of the Biomedical and Electrical Engineering program, and now I work for the Faculty of Engineering and Design's outreach team. Today, we'll be hosting two presentations. The first one will be covering our 13 engineering programs, as well as the engineering community. And our second presentation will cover our three design schools and the design school community. Feel free to chat with us using the chat features. We have some great representatives answering questions throughout the presentation, and they'll also stay for 15 minutes after the presentation to answer all of the questions. If you don't get a chance to have your question answered, feel free to email us at liaison at carlton.ca. With regards to your application, make sure that you email the admissions team at admissions at carlton.ca. So engineering is a pre-professional degree. This means that in order to call yourself an engineer, you must first complete your four years, your four year undergrad degree at an accredited university. So you can complete any of our 13 engineering programs. And then after that, you need to work for four years under a professional engineer, write an ethics test and prove you're of good character by submitting your references. Once you've completed this, then you'll receive the designation of professional engineer. Carleton has 13 different engineering programs from the most common like mechanical, civil and electrical to some unique ones to Carleton like engineering physics, sustainable and renewable energy engineering and communications engineering. So the first department that I'm going to discuss is the Department of Electronics. This department consists of electrical engineering, engineering physics, and the first stream of sustainable and renewable energy engineering. Electrical engineering focuses on the electricity, electronics, and electromagnetism of small devices like cell phones, all the way up to large scale devices like our homes. Engineering physics is a shared program with the Department of Physics, which specifically focuses on small nanotechnologies. Students will actually get a chance to manufacture their very own microchips using Carleton's microfabrication lab, which you can see on the left of my slides. And finally, we have the electrical stream of sustainable and renewable energy engineering. And this focuses on the distribution and the generation of green energy by using smart grid technologies. Next up, we're going to be talking about the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering. Aerospace Engineering is Carleton's most competitive program because it's Canada's oldest aerospace program. Carleton's program is unique because you actually get the chance to specialize in one of four of our streams. Biomedical and Mechanical Engineering combines engineering with the mechanics of the human body. The first two years focus on understanding the fundamentals of mechanics like thermodynamics, solids and materials. And then those fundamentals are applied to the human body to understand biomechanics, biomaterials and implants and devices. Mechanical engineering is extremely broad because it encompasses all things with moving parts. With jobs in automotive, HVAC air conditioning, aerospace and materials industry, there are so many directions that you can take your career. In your fourth year, you'll actually have engineering electives to help you decide what engineering you'd like to work in. The second stream of sustainable and renewable energy engineering is in this department. So this focuses on the mechanical aspects of green technology, like how we build wind turbines and water mills, as well as understanding thermodynamic processes to improve their efficiency. So next is the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. So architectural conservation and sustainability engineering combines architecture, civil and environmental all into one. This is done by taking history of architecture classes, understanding the key concepts of structural engineering with a green focus and understanding how to analyze the impact construction will have on the surrounding environment. Civil engineering at Carleton is divided up into two streams, structural and highway transportation and infrastructure. 
With the structural stream, you'll dive into the fundamentals of building science and materials in order to analyze bridges and building structures. Environmental engineers use engineering and science principles to design innovative treatment technologies that can help minimize our environmental footprint, prevent pollution, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, improve air quality, ensure drinking water safety, and achieve overall environmental sustainability. Our last department is the Department of Systems and Computer Engineering. Biomedical and electrical engineering combines the human body with electrical engineering concepts. So this is done by understanding different imaging systems like CT scans and MRI machines. And you'll also understand EMG and EKG signals in order to help develop sensors that can be used in prosthetics and pacemakers. Communications engineering entails understanding hardware and software used in networking and telecommunications systems. This can include 5G networks, fiber optics, and all other forms of telecommunication. Computer systems engineering is a combination of hardware and software engineering. You'll understand how to physically build an electronic system, but also how to code it to do certain things. Software engineering focuses on understanding multiple coding languages and then applying them to programs that you've created to do just about anything. So for every three hours of classes, typically you'll also have three hours of labs. So this can include working with our autonomous vehicles, it can include understanding thermodynamics in our Urbandale home, learning about integrating alternative and sustainable power sources and improving their efficiency in our Hydro Ottawa lab, building and understanding satellites in our satellite design lab, or even working on a Mars rover. So now that we've covered the information about all of our programs, Let's dive into some support services specifically for engineers. So the Elsie McGill Learning Center is a free drop in service provided for students taking first year engineering courses. Engineering scholars will assist with program with questions related to your engineering, math and science courses. There's also linguistic scholars that are there to help you with our communication skills for engineering class. All scholars are also there to help with any university transition issues that may come up. Students starting this fall will be getting a block registration. So this means that you'll have pre-selected core courses um, that are required for your degree. If you're having issues with the registration, you can contact our academic support office for all of that help. As you progress through your degree, you can reach out to your departmental advisor with help with course selection and planning. Peer assisted study sessions is for everyone. Whether your grades are top notch or could use some improvement, PASS will help you get the grade you want by reviewing the course content as well as learning study skills. PASS is a welcoming and supportive environment where you can work through those diff that difficult material that you learned in class, um, or you can ask a question that you didn't have time to ask the professor. It's a relaxed, informal environment um, and students aren't being graded. It's just a way for students to participate and collaborate on any homework questions. So now we're going to move on to some support services that are general to all Carleton students. So the Paul Menton Center is responsible for coordination of academic accommodations and support services for students with visible and non visible disabilities. Our therapy dog program. They post hours online where you can go meet with the dog and de-stress before midterms and exams. Another great opportunity outside of the classroom is co-op. So co-op is a work placement at a company, organization, or government agency where you get hands-on work experience in your field. It's available as an option for all of the programs that I talked about and also all of our design programs we'll talk about later. If you hadn't already selected this on your application, you can still add it. Co-op doesn't start until second year um, and you also need a minimum GPA to be able to participate in this program. 
So there's positions across Canada and all around the world, but if you choose to remain in Canada, your work experience can count towards those four years of work experience for your license that we talked about earlier. All these positions are paid and depending on the type of work you do, you can earn anywhere from $15 to $30 an hour. You'll need a total of 16 months to complete this program and it's typically broken in broken down into a four month after your second year and then a 12 month in between your third and fourth year. Some programs may differ from this, but you can check in with your co-op office for the recommended study pattern. So transitioning to post-secondary can be challenging. It's a different environment than high school. One key advice that I have is to be resourceful and get involved. There's so many ways to get involved, either through specific engineering clubs, um, but also just through general Carleton clubs. In the first week of school, all of our clubs meet in one location, so you can walk around, learn about them, and decide if you want to join. There's over 200 clubs and societies at Carleton, and this is a great way to build up your resume. Within the engineering community, we have stream societies like the Biomedical Engineering Society or the Engineering Physics Society, um, but we also have clubs that focus on designing and building projects, and then you get to compete in competitions all around Canada and the US. So some of these, some examples of these are the Trotsky Bridge Building Team. There's also so many more to help our students get involved, to connect with people in your program or not in your program. Some other examples of engineering clubs and societies. So all of our students are automatically a part of CSCS, which is the Carleton Student Engineering Society. This society hosts so many events. It's where our engineering newspaper is made that can be written just by any student. Um, you also get discounts on intramural teams if you want to play sports, um, and they also host networking and social events. The CNG musical allows engineers to write, sing, dance, act, organize, and entertain the engineering community. The CNG performs a show every year, um, and the proceeds are donated to charity. Carleton provides you with a co-curricular record every year that'll list all the involvement. And this is definitely a great way to shine when you're dealing with employers. It's also a great way to meet new people, follow your passion, network, and develop soft skills. So our campus is its own little community in Ottawa. We aren't in downtown Ottawa, but it's only a 20 minute bus ride to the Byward Market. The airport, bus station, and train station are only 15 minutes away and easily accessible using OC Transpo. Ottawa is a beautiful city with lots of things to do. On Thursday nights, all the museums in the city are free. Nature, science and technology, war, or even the Civilization Museum. In the winter, Ottawa is home to the largest outdoor skating rink in the world, starting at Carleton University and ending at Parliament. To help accommodate for the cold winters in Ottawa, Carleton actually has an underground tunnel system that can get you to any building to another one. Some popular events um, include the Panda Game or the Capital Hoops Game, um, where Carleton and Ottawa U compete. So that is all for the presentation, but like I said, we're gonna stick around to keep on answering your questions. Um, but feel free to also connect with us on any other platform so you can follow us on social media um, or you could also head to our website for more information on the faculty. So thank you and I'll be seeing you in the question period.